It is a month where we should be careful of what comes out of our mouth, yet many of us are only careful about what goes into our mouths. I shouldn't eat, I shouldn't drink. We'll ask, we'll phone the scholar and say, you know, I used the nasal spray and I felt a small drop going in. Is my fast valid? But we won't say, I've been swearing my wife all afternoon. Is my fast valid? Yeah. We won't say, I was so angry with the guy on the road, I started swearing him, F's and B's, I almost beat him up, is my fast valid? We won't say that, but we'll ask about, you know, I was asthmatic and I felt like coughing and you know, I put a little spray in my mouth and, and I started breathing okay and someone told me your fast is not valid, is it okay, is it not okay? My brother, there are bigger things that you are not even worried about. Look at what I'm saying, we're talking about the 1 gram, 0.1 gram of lead on an alloy. Subhanallah, that affects your whole vehicle. I promise you, your entire paradise can be achieved or lost based on one small deed. So do not belittle the value of goodness, even if it is a little smile. And do not belittle the damage of a sin, even if it is a drop of backbiting. You see what is backbiting, subhanAllah. We talk about people behind their backs. My brothers and sisters, I challenge you and myself, don't talk about others. Don't talk about them unless you're saying something good. Or unless you are involved in it and you need your right. لا يحب الله الجهر بالسوء من القول إلا من ظلم Allah does not like you to speak openly about some bad of someone unless you have been oppressed when you're oppressed i will go to the police perhaps and complain you know that man did this and he did that i mean i can't go to the policeman and say guys you know something happened but i'm a muslim i'm not allowed to backbite they look at you and say what i can't backbite but something happened <laughs> so and that proves that you are allowed to speak sometimes when you have to about someone you're involved you're oppressed you need your right you have to open your mouth and you're going to have to say, this man did that, that one did this and I really need your help and so on. But when it doesn't concern you, it's not that major. It is something that subhanallah, you just want to belittle someone. Juicy gossip will also break your fast. Do you know that? But it breaks it in a different way. It nullifies the reward of your fast. It nullifies the reward of your fast. Juicy gossip, but we love it. We marinate it as well. Do you know how? Subhanallah, we add flavor to it. We just heard, you know, oh, do you see that guy's walking with that woman on the road? That's what we heard. The next thing, you see that guy's going out with that chick there, do you see? <laughs> After that, oh, you know, she's got a bump. I think she's pregnant. <laughs> that is the gossip. We added marination and wallahi, we're saying dirty things. This is valid inside or outside of Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. My brothers and sisters, this is a month of becoming a better person. You want to become a better person, you need to increase your value in the eyes of Allah. What is taqwa? I'm conscious of Allah. Conscious of Allah meaning anything that's going to displease Allah. I must become conscious of it. I want to impress upon you the importance of being kind to those you live with. We're living in an age of technology, mashallah. The world has become a global village. People get to know each other. People get to reach out to others. And can I tell you one of the biggest problems we have? Those whom we live with, we're not getting along with them. With our children, a lot of the times you have, this is another red button. A lot of the times you have children saying, you know, I want to marry someone and my father is saying no, my mother is saying no, or sometimes they are already somehow married and then they're saying, but I don't know what to do, I'm stuck because my family or the family, whatever. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, we're all to blame. Do you know why? We don't have time for one another these days. So father, no time. Mother, no time. Children, no time. Everyone is spending time on the wrong things with the wrong circle so when a problem happens we are only introduced to it way within that problem in a way that we cannot solve it it's too late it's too far down the line they already have fixed up everything they've been going out for the last four years father living in the dark sometimes he's also going out with someone
It's a reality. Mother, another story, not interested. And here comes the child saying, don't worry, I, let's, we'll try with my dad. But you know what? They've been having a relationship like husband and wife for the last four years. And the father says, no, you're not marrying. Brother, it's, this is just a formality. We're coming to you to say we're doing haram. You are the only guy who can halalize it. So we need that. That's all you're saying. You, we need to come up straight. But the father, pride. Why pride? What are people going to say? What are people? What is Allah going to say? What is Allah already saying? There is darkness upon you and your home. You need to open the door and smell the coffee. Even if it's Ramadan. My brothers and sisters, we need to open the doors and understand the reality of what's going on. Help your children. Be kind to them. Understand them. They may make mistakes, but we need to realize that we've also made mistakes. And they will come back. They're still our kids, but we cannot allow our egos and our pride and our concern for what Tom, Dick and Harry are going to say about our children when we are the parents. We have to do the right thing. You're a Muslim. You follow the deen. The deen tells you no to racism, no to tribalism, no to nepotism and whatever other isms there are that are terrible. No to them. That's what your deen tells you. That's what the prophet peace be upon him tells you. And I've come across pious people with beards that stretch a meter beyond them. And they tell you, no, I don't care what the prophet says. I'm saying this. What did you just say? What did you just say? Salah first off. Fasting, you might fast as long as, long as forever. Quran, one khatam a day. But you just said a statement that would nullify all of that. Let's face reality, my brothers and sisters. Make life easy for those you live with and your Ramadan will be the best. We have complaints every day about people who live with each other. I am one of those who believes that when your children get married, they should stay separately from day one because the further they are, the further they are physically, the closer they will be into your heart. The more you try to keep everyone together, the more distant they become because we clash. Yes, there are exceptions to that. There are some homes that are fortunate, Alhamdulillah, but the general trend we have issues when everyone lives together. You have to have a big heart. You have to be very, very accommodating. And you have to understand your view is only but an opinion. That's all. It's not to be dictated upon. Do you want to live nicely? Do you want to be happy? I promise you, you make others who live with you happy and you shall be very happy. The problem with us, everyone is selfish. My view, that's it. We are selfish. The father selfish, mother selfish, brother, wife, the other one, the children, the other wife, the other brother. What are you doing all living all like this when you don't have the patience? Develop the patience. Sometimes circumstances make us live together. If that is the case, learn to respect people. Give them their freedom. Don't burden them with something extra over and above what is generally expected of them. You know what I'm saying? will probably be affecting a lot of us here. Because we're about to enter Ramadan. I want it to be a beautiful Ramadan. You have your daughter-in-law. Every day you bring along 10 people. Come on, she's a human being. Make it once, twice, that's it. Every Eid, the same daughter-in-law, every Eid, it's expected of her to cook for 50 people. Whenever is she going to have the day to have an Eid? And we blackmail her spiritually by telling her, this is your Jannah. <laughs> your Jannah, you could have said, okay, my Jannah is I'm going to buy some food from outside and put my pride wherever it belongs. And I'm going to ensure that you too can have a beautiful Eid. Why are the restaurants there? For what? Why do they open on the day of Eid? Take out that money that you want to brag and boast and show about. And buy some food and let the women at home have a day off. May Allah make it easy. I see the guys are smiling. I suppose those smiling are those who own the restaurants, right? <laughs> free advert, free advertising. 
But it's a fact. Why? We are no longer living in a stage where you can impose on family members and whether it's your wife, your daughter-in-law, your mom, whoever else it may be, different people. Wallahi, we make them suffer and we make them believe that Ramadan is a month where you're supposed to be in the kitchen for at least seven hours. And then only will your taraweeh be accepted. And for them, it's just Qul Allahu Ahad in every rak'ah. Allah forgive us. Wallahi, it's a sin, it's a crime. They also need to read Quran. They also need to get close to Allah. Come on, be considerate. And we go to our friends' houses every day and we sit and we, you know, there are people who are, who might be, might be cursing you. When is this guy going to leave? Subhanallah. I remember when I was a kid, some of you might have heard this, me say it again, it's come to my mind just now. When I was a kid, we went to someone's house with my mother. And as we're entering, we saw this sign. The sign says, we are very happy at your arrival, but we will be even happier when you depart. Oh, wow. Straight to the point. Straight to the point. It means you need to know how long you're going to stay here. We never went back to that house. My mother didn't want. And I'm trying to explain to her, you know what? It's just a joke. Come on. It's just a sticker to laugh. But in reality, it's true for everyone. We're happy you came. But if you overstay, we're going to be happier when you go. And the next time you come, we're going to send the child out to say, my daddy said that I must come out and tell you that he's not at home. <laughs> yeah, subhanallah. Brothers and sisters, you need to know things. You need to understand things. I've said a few words. I'm going to continue on this topic elsewhere, inshallah. So perhaps if you follow, you might get a little bit more of this dose. Please forgive me. I was passionate based on a lot of what's happened today. I really love you all for the sake of Allah. And I really believe that we have a connection, and not just with us, we have a duty unto all those whom we live with, Muslim and non-Muslim. We have a duty unto them. And we are, we are supposed to be from among those who really care for each other. I want this month of Ramadan to be a month with a difference for myself and for everyone. And I told you how to start it. We've been fasting all along. We've been reading Quran, etc., etc. This time, learn to develop your character during the month of Ramadan. Your conduct, be the best husband, the best man. The best woman, the best wife, the best mother, the best mother-in-law, the best father, the best daughter-in-law. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless.